Hey Casita trailer owners. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, greasing your easy lube grease fitting on your trailer tires. This is going to be a little bit of an extended video so if you want to get a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage while you watch, uh, why don't you do that? The first thing we've got to make sure we have is that the wheel can spin freely, which means getting the trailer up on jacks. Now I'll show you how I've done this. Incidentally, I have one of these closed cell blow up little mattresses I use instead of a creeper when I'm on like shells like I am here. Works great. And you get onto here now, we could take a look. I pump this up from here in this position with a hydraulic jack, okay? So that's how I get the height, and then I have this uh, decent uh, car stand that's holding the trailer up. And notice I'm right on this bar, and I'm only about, you know, you can see that I'm, I'm not too far up from where the L bracket for the axle is, is, is uh, welded on. So that's the start. Now when you spin your tire, you may hear a little sound. Can you hear that in there? That's the brakes dragging just a little bit. That's nothing to worry about. But it may freak out some of you uh, new guys with your trailer. Don't worry about that. It's just a little brake drag. It's, sometimes they'll actually set the brakes to be like that. And drag just a little bit. <clears throat> Once you get going, that'll that'll spin off until you have good access to your brakes when you hit your pedal. So, first thing you want to do before you uh, start the lube job is get the trailer up. And you might as well get them both up. In fact, this is how I store my trailer, and I'm not using it for a few months. Get the weight off the tires so that the tires can relax a little bit. And that's much better for your sidewalls. Okay, so we'll stop here. Okay, here we are back in the garage for a minute because I do want to share with you what I'm using to uh, grease the uh, Easy Lube fittings. Uh, Casita has a little list which lists its criteria for their acceptable grease. It actually comes from the axle maker Dexter. Um, quite a number of those recommended greases are uh, not too readily available. Uh, what I've been able to find that I've decided to use is uh, a red grease and uh, what I'm going with is the Lucas Red and Tacky number no. 2. Now this is an NGL number no. 2. Uh, it is um, of course a lithium complex grease. Um, be difficult for you to read this unless I change the, the camera but uh, it is a uh, it has anti-seize feature or anti-seize fortified ingredients which uh, the other greases don't really have or don't claim they have. What comes out of the Casita stock from the factory or stock from Dexter appears uh, a grease similar to this but it's not crimson. It's a Crimson has a real smell to it. Um, this isn't really acceptable to use crimson because it doesn't have a high enough drop point. That's got to do with viscosity and you know how, how how high the temperature can go before it starts to liquefy. Um, the red and tacky has an excellent drop point. The other physical characteristics of this, which you can find at the Lucas site, are also very good. So we're going to go with the red and tacky. Uh, it also pumps rather well. Okay. So today we're going with the red and tacky. And we're not doing a, a top off here, we're doing a full pump through. You're going to need two, yeah that's right, two of these, okay? Here's my little pump, uh, my little uh, jack hydraulic jack pump. This is a uh, Northern Tools 12 ton, big red. and. Uh, this works so much better than the Walmart counterpart. Uh, this is a really nice little jack. Real easy to pump. You don't even have to put the extender in here to pump it up. You can always pump it up with your finger. 
which is really handy. It's also kind of a little bit of a stubby. So you're going to need your blocks when you use this to get it up to the right height. But uh, this is not that heavy of a jack. You can lift it with one hand, or almost. <laughs> um, and of course your blocks don't weigh much either. Uh, you can go with a longer, you know, double extension hydraulic piston for about 75 bucks out of Northern. But they're very heavy. They're like 25 pounds. So uh, I like the uh, the ease of pumping that, that happens with this little hydraulic. Okay, well here we are back at the trailer and uh, we're going to proceed with the uh, greasing of the uh, Easy Lube fitting. You wondered where that is, it's you know right here in the center. Um, one of the things you're going to need to do this job is a screwdriver. You have a uh, nice ruby red screwdriver to, make to match our ruby red grease. <laughs> That's color coding. So the first thing we're going to do is just take off this rubber cap. Now this comes off easy by just uh, getting your getting your lip of the screwdriver underneath there and pushing in a little. You'll feel the edge of the steel lip under there, and then you can just kind of pry it out. Just pry it out easy. Make sure it doesn't fall on the ground. Okay, just just pry it out. It's going to have the old grease in there. Okay, just put that aside in a safe place. We're going to clean this out later, but we'll put it away for now. Okay. All right. Now you can see there's already some grease in there, okay? and if you look, it probably looks kind of watery. Over time, grease kind of loses its viscosity, along with picking out micro particles of dirt and metal fragments and things like that. And it doesn't last forever, so that's one of the reasons why you want to refresh your your grease. And uh, you know, grease is actually a pretty darn complex subject. You'd be surprised, but there is a lot to know about grease. All well, greases are not created equal. Greases do not get along well with each other often. Um, the Lucas grease will pretty much go pretty well with most other red greases, but uh, I'd still, you know, try to flush it out as much as possible. Now, this Easy Lube fitting has your standard Zerk fitting at the end, where you were going to be pumping it in. That's essentially like a little tube with a ball bearing in it, with a spring in back of it, and when you put your put your grease gun fitting over that, you push that ball bearing back, it allows grease to flow by the sides of it. And that's what a Zerk fitting is. Z-E-K-E, -E, I think it's Zerk, something like that. It had to be the guy's name that created it, probably. One of the most other important tools you're going to need to do this job is this tongue depressor with one end cut off flat. That's because the grease is going to start to ooze out around the Zerk fitting and we need a way to scoop it out so we don't make a mess. Okay? We also want to be rotating our tire as we pump full. Okay? Now this can get messy very quick so if you have about 10 paper towels and you think you're ready to go, go back and get another 10. Okay. Also, you want a little plastic disposable thing like this because we're going to scrape this off. Now I've already pumped some of our lovely Lucas Ruby Red into there and you can see how pretty that is. That's what we want to see eventually coming out of the sides of this thing, not this stuff. And you can see it's grossly different color. Okay, see how dark that is? The white is really good to use because, you know, you can start to see the grease change. Okay. So, we're going to keep this handy. Next thing is the grease gun. Now, don't get a grease gun with a giant pumper arm on it. You'll see these heavy-duty pumpers. Uh-uh, don't want that. You want one that looks like this. Notice it's also color-coded. Um, this is one I'm using just for this trailer. It's like 10 bucks to buy this at Advanced Auto Parts, where you can get the Lucas Grease as well. No, I don't work for them. Um, actually, I think it was AutoZone I got it at. Um, what I like about this is it's just got this, you know, little pumper, um, piston pumper here, instead of the big hydraulic, because that develops too much pressure inside this hub, and it possibly could blow out a seal or something. With this, not so much pressure. So it's a slower operation with this. Now, I don't have a full new grease tube in here, so I'm going to have to stop halfway through. Um, with the new trailer, you know, you can easily pump uh, three quarters of a tube of grease through before you start really getting into the new stuff heavy. So we're going to go on along here just for a little bit, and then I'm going to have to stop and, and change tubes, okay? All right. 
So you want to make sure your grease fitting here is not too tight. You can adjust this if it is too tight. But I've already done that, so I'm going to put that on there. And uh, you can see I have to work a little to get it off. But that's all right, because I, I want to be able to spit, spill it, spin it. Okay. Also, you want to make sure the zerk is absolutely clean. It doesn't have any dirt in there. It doesn't, so you don't want to pump it in, you know. So, you know, make sure that's heavily lubed, you know, that you have plenty of lube on there. Maybe shoot your gun a little. Make sure your gun is pumping grease to make sure that it's coming out. Okay, see that beautiful red color? That's what we want to see. So we'll put that right over there. We'll get back out of the zerk. And what we want to do is we want to be able to spin. And you can see with the small pump, too, we can, we can spin and pump one hand. Okay, so we got one hand for the spinning and one hand for the pumping. So we want to start pumping and spinning. And this is going to take a little bit of time. So we're just going to go along here and pump and spin. It's not too exciting. There's not too much else I can tell you about this while this is happening. You put in quite a bit before it'll actually even start, you know, uh, coming out at all. Because when the trailers are made at Dexter, they, they're packing these bearings in grease. And I don't think they're fully f filling the entire, uh, you know, lubricating chamber like what's happening now. Um, I think I see a little bit start. Sometimes you're. Uh, your fitting may ooze a little bit of the end, like, like mine's doing here. That's nothing really big. Just drop it in our little container there. I can see it just starting to move now. Yeah. So we're going to get the runny stuff out first. Don't, run, don't stop spinning, keep it spinning, because that really helps move it around. And you see it start to ooze up. It's a very oozy job, especially the first stuff now. It's going to be kind of thin, thin and oozy. Not to be confused with the oozy machine gun. Which is an excellent Israeli product. You can see it's starting to come now. You can see how I'm using the tongue depressor to take it away, and I'm just scraping it off. I'm not sure if that's in view. I'm scraping it off onto my little plastic tray there. This will take you a while. This is also a, a rather warm day in Florida. It's about 88 out. So we are going to have the grease moving quite nicely today. I don't suggest you do this when it's really cold, because the grease is going to be difficult to pump. Difficult to pump out. You can see that it's a dark maroon color, this grease. Uh, I, now the red may turn dark maroon. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I've never used this Lucas before, so um, I'll let you know next time I change it to see if it's turned maroon, but I doubt, I pro this This is probably, there's another gru uh, grease called Paladin, Flat Paladin, could also be that grease. Different greases have different smells. This grease that's coming out here almost, almost has no smell, um, as opposed to that other maroon grease, grease I showed you, but this stuff really stinks. If you get it on your hands, even though you wash your hands a lot, the stink doesn't come off. So, it's just a matter of slowly pumping along. Oops, got a nice blob on the rim. That's what you don't want to do. If you do have to get that on there, you can just kind of scoop it off and use a paper towel at this point. Spit along. You, know, you can hear the brake dragging a little bit there. Hmm. 
didn't barely get to there in time, didn't I, huh? I know, this is such an exciting video. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop the video here and continue pumping a little bit. And uh, I could tell you a little bit about balancing wheels. Uh, some people don't believe in trailer balancing. Wheels on trailers, uh, these wheels are, are balanced. Unfortunately, at the time, I didn't know about something called lug balancing, which is a special adapter you can ask for when you're at the trailer. Uh, not, at, not the trailer, at a, at a really good tire store. They will have a lug-centric balancer. Uh, I balance these hub-centric, which is okay, but nowhere as good as lug-centric. You can see how much they were off with these weights on it. Uh, a lot of people complain about, you know, rivets breaking and things like that. And yeah, that can have something to do with the road you're going over. But the vibration of unbalanced tires is really significant in your trailer. It's like a four or five point Rick, uh, Richter scale earthquake going on in your trailer all the time. So, um, take your tires off one at a time and bring them on down. You know, you can take them both off the way I got it set up now and bring it on down to a really good tire store. Ask them if they have the lug centric adapter, which you know, a really good new tire machine will have. And have them do that. Uh, we've actually done this with another trailer, and it is amazing how stable and level that thing rides. Uh, if we had a seismograph in it, that thing would be totally calm, totally flatlined. In fact, I always thought that would be a nice video to make, is to have put a little portable seismograph in a trailer that had, you know, newly balanced tires on it. And, um, try it, then try it with uh, new tires, no balancing. So, now there is another way to do this. You can uh, take off the wheel, you can take off the, the whole assembly here, uh, the hubs, and, and get, get down to the bearings and repack them by hand, which uh, some people will do. And uh, at some point, it's, it's probably a, a good thing to do. I think if you're going to get down that far, you know, then you might as well just replace them. I mean, why well, just repack them at that point, you know, buy another really good set of bearings and, and just, you know, replace them. So, you know, we're just continuing to uh, pump along here. So I'll take my one dry finger, or one non-greasy finger, and, and stop the camera for a minute here. Okay guys, we're continuing on with our little grease pumping session here. It did take me a little while to uh, get this new grease tube in because, uh, as often happens, I developed an air, air, trapped air space inside the gun and I didn't want to pump. So uh, there's a little purge valve on the top of it and you can undo it mess around with that, put your finger on it, take it off, pump some more, pump some more. Finally, it'll it'll clear the, uh, the air, air space, and you'll be back to pumping good grease again. So, we're getting to the point now where we're seeing the good grease start to come out. It's uh, similar to the same grease that we're putting in here. You can see that it's lighter in color. It's that pretty cherry color which is our new stuff. So again, we're just scooping it off here as we're going along here. There's a little bit of a flushing action going on. You know, you're not just replacing grease, but you're actually, you know, flushing the cylinder space and you're flushing the bearings as, as much as you can flush them through this process. So, uh, it's probably not as, as good as really you know, taking the bearings out and cleaning them and everything and um, repacking them by hand and then doing this. I mean, that would be, you know, OCD master course, you know. But I think, you know, as it stands, this is, this is pretty, this is pretty high level OCD just to do this. Um, I'm just about ready to stop here because I'm happy the way this is looking now. I can see that it's mainly all the new grease here. It's all pretty translucent red and uh, so it doesn't hurt to put a little bit more in because you know it's coming out and don't forget to spin 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 
and pump along. You can see I can pump it slowly and easily while this is happening. And, and uh, I don't have to use two hands to hold the pump and everything. So, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Looking at it in the sun, yeah, that looks like it's just all new grease there, okay? So, I'll do, uh, I'll do just a few more. Okay. And then, uh, whoops, I see my gun's leaking a little bit here. Now I'll pull this off. Yeah. See that, what happened there was that the fitting uh, unscrewed itself from the, uh, the gun. And so when I went to pull it off, uh, it took the gun off. And this can happen. So it's a little bit of a mess. I'm glad it's on tape. <laughs> Actually, on, on digital, I should say. So how are we going to get this off? All right. Well, you know, it's funny, but even the simplest little job, there's always some screw-up. But I, I uh, screwed this thing on really tightly a number of times. So I'm surprised it, it undid itself completely. But it looks like it did. So what I'm going to have to do is get a wrench so I can turn this properly and get this back in here. Okay? So I'll stop this here. Since I've got to go inside to get the wrench. Yeah. And more paper towels. Okay guys, and just to follow up here, um, I was unable to screw this back on because, surprise, surprise, this high quality AutoZone new uh, gun, uh, it actually, this fitting here was probably cut a little too deep, it actually cracked right off, so I, I can't even screw it back in because uh, there's half of it stuck in there, about uh, uh, three-eighths of an inch in, and uh, of course it's in the thread, so uh, I could try to dig it out somehow, but you know, these are like 10, 12 bucks, so it's probably not worth my time. So I guess this was a one-time use. Uh, I can get the grease out of here and use it in another gun, so that's that's all right. Um, but uh, this uh, super deluxe quality grease gun is a history, pretty much. But at least we uh, were able to use it enough to get our our uh, fitting fold. Incidentally, how I got this off here, in case, you're, in case this ever happens to you, is, uh, you know, I just used a pair of vice grips. I got it on there and, and gave it a good tug. I mean, if you're going to travel or something, you know, bring vice grips because there's so many uses for these. And not one. Bring like three. Yeah. So, um, we're done filling with grease. And, uh, and my pump is done pumping grease forever. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to clean out the uh, little cap here. <clears throat> you can just wipe this out. Yeah. Try to get all that contaminated grease out. Okay. And then... Uh, we want to make sure there's not many voids here, so make sure that's filled up really good. I have a little fresh grease here that when I went, my pump wasn't working, so I'll put that in there. So it's completely filled. Can't even see the fitting now. And then I'll take a little more, and I'll put it inside of this. Because I uh, don't really want to leave a bunch of air space here, because condensation can kind of hang out there. There's just no reason to do it. <clears throat> so, just make sure you're, you're scooping up any from down here. That's the, that's the good stuff. Okay? Alright. Now we're just going to put this back on. Yeah, it's going to lose out a little. That's alright. That's alright. 
use a little pressure. Just like being at the doctor's office. Just a little pressure now. No! Oh, not that much pressure. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit in there. And, uh, see what we've got here. Sometimes you want to lift it up just a little bit if there's any back pressure on the back of it, you know. Trapped pressure, I should say. Now, I'm sure you're asking, or you've been asking all along, how often do I do this? Well, I think it's worth doing once a year. And, uh, if you're, you know, using your trailer like crazy, I would do it every, you know, 12,000 miles. It's not that big of an operation to do. You know, if it can save your wheel. Now, one of the ways you test to make sure your bearings are good is by temperature. See, I'm lifting this up just a little bit so I can take a little bit of the pressure off, which I did. Okay. Let it ooze out a little bit. One of the, is get yourself one of these little heat guns. You can buy them on Amazon for about 40 bucks. And when you're trailering during the day, you take the little laser and you point it right on here. Point it right on here, and you can get your temperature of your hub. Now this thing should be, I don't know, maybe on a hot day, maybe 120 degrees. It shouldn't be so horribly hot that you can't kind of put your fingers on it for a second or two. Uh, if it's really hot, if it has any smell of metal, if you're getting readings, you know, over, I don't know, 190 or something like that, it's probably something's going on in that hub. You should probably then do a full disassembly and have a look at the bearings and probably replace the bearings. But uh, these bigger tires usually run nice and cool. Now if you got a little trailer and you feel a big trailer's tires, if you've both been on the road, his will be cool and yours will be hot. Especially if you've got one of these little tiny 8-inch tires or 12-inch tires and you're running down here in Florida. Now on the interstates here, in Florida, uh, we always see all these trailers off the side of the road, broken down, blown out tires. At the room is always these little trailers with their little tires because they just get too hot. Hot, 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 and then it blows out. So, uh, this ends the how to grease your easy lube fittings and break a Greek gra grease gun in the process. And that's all today from the Casita Commander.